الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We continue إن شاء الله تعالى with كتاب الطهارة from the book أخصر المختصرات. And uh, before we continue إن شاء الله تعالى again what is meant by this is to go through these مسائل of matters of purification and to seek that knowledge which is uh, علم that is wajib mandatory upon every Muslim to learn how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to purify ourselves. And also, uh, it's not just like a, a general lecture where we learn and that's it, but it's something that maybe can uh, encourage uh, even one of us or some of us uh, to take the matter of studying the deen seriously to get a taste of, uh, of uh, something of matters of knowledge so that we would learn knowledge in the proper way and to learn the language of the knowledge which is the Arabic language and to go through the proper channels of doing so by learning with the people of knowledge and having their companionship. Uh, so this is also another objective. And when we're going through the words one by one in Arabic like this also to get us familiar with this as these types of matun is meant for it to be memorized and to be understood and to always refer back to it. You refer back to it and you refer to your notes and things like this and then to take it to another level, not to be just satisf satisfied with this level and that's why we're going brief and maybe also can later, inshallah ta'ala, talks about more of the adilla or the evidences. So we stopped here at the fasl after mentioning the al-istinja and some of the adab. Uh, before he talks about the wudu, he makes a mention a chapter here. He says faslun, and fasl again is a chapter, something that is separated from what's before. He says, yusannu as-siwaku bil'ud. Yusann, and as we heard yusann, that means it's recommended. Before he said wasunna, with the seen noon with the shadda, in the passive tense, here he uses the plural, the present tense, yusannu. It is uh, from the sunnah. It's recommended. That means a person gets rewards if he does it. There's no sin if he misses it. But this is the lugha or this is the way of the fuqaha when they define what the sunnah according to the fiqh perspective. And it doesn't mean that we leave it because there's no sin. No, it means that we do it. It means we try our best to do what is recommended unless we can. That's a different situation. It doesn't invalidate our salah, but it's something very stressed, something to be done since it's recommended. So he said, يُسَنُّ السِّوَاكُ بِالْعُودِ And السِّوَاك is the, uh, the stick that we all know, uh, which is used to clean the, the tooth. بِالْعُودِ uh, And العود is the, the stick. And العود here refers to what is known to be the عود. Right, so uh, this is what is known to be this uh, used to for siwak. Of course, the best of it is al arak from the tree of al arak. But any oud that would fulfill that purpose, it's also to be called siwak. So not only the ones from the tree of al arak, but also others can be called siwak, and it's good to be used as long as it does the job in which cleaning the teeth. But the best, of course, is. Uh, the siwak made of Arak and that's why he mentioned here Bil'ud uh, then he says Kulla waqt yusannu as-siwaku bil'udi kulla waqt that means in every time and at all uh, times and uh, this is what it means Kulla waqt that means in every in all times and then he would mention exceptions here and what is more stressed so at any time if a person uses the siwak MashaAllah, it's mataratun lil it purifies the mouth and it's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and the Prophet والسلام, would use it when he would enter his uh, home and things like this. But then he says, Illa lisa'imin ba'da zawadi fayukra. This is a mas'ala here. Except, it's recommended at all times, except lisa'im for someone fasting ba'da zawal, after the zawal, after the time of dhuhr. He says, فَيُكْرَهُ فَيُكْرَهُ that means is disliked. What's before is masnoon is recommended. This is makruh, it is disliked. And uh, this is a mas'ala again as we heard and the ulama mentioned 
uh, or why they said it's your karaha because of the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, about khulufa misa'im the smell of the of the of the mouth of the fasting person is more be- pleasant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than rihil misk and the smell of musk so uh, and that usually is comes after the zawal that smell usually comes in the later part of the day so that's why they said that and this is uh, something that is pleasant charan pleasant religiously not pleasantly or not pleasant طبعاً, not pleasant with one's nature nobody likes the bad smell but it's a it's a pleasant thing in the shar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with someone fasting uh, and as a result of that he would have a smell it's not the smell of a bad breath it's a smell of being empty stomach so uh, this is what is it's not like an encouragement for a person to have a bad breath and that's why uh, the other riwayah and other opinions that There's no evidence that clearly states that a Muslim should not use the siwak. And actually, there's evidence to be used after the zawal, even after asr and so on. As long as a person doesn't swallow anything and as long as it doesn't have a special taste to it, like the ones with mint and things of that nature. But again, this is, again, as we're going through the graduate way of <coughs> knowing that this is, <coughs> some of the ulama, they mentioned that, uh, and others, they said it's okay. وَيَتَأَكَّدُ عِنْدَ يَتَأَكَّدْ That means... It is more stressed. Uh, that means what is yata'akkad? A siwak. Uh, something mu'akkad, like a sunnah mu'akkada, the stressed sunnah. So yata'akkad, this sunnah is recommended uh, and it's stressed specifically inda. And as we said, inda before means what? Very close. When something is attached, attached to what's mentioned after it. So inda salah, right before the salah. Inda wudu, before the wudu. So inda salah. عند صلاة. not 15 minutes after the salah if you do it at home before you come to the salah sure mashallah great في كل وقت it's sunnah to make use of swag but يتأكد it's more stressed you know after you do that is right before the salah because it's meant for the person to have a pleasant or not to have a bad breath during the salah uh, عند صلاة ونحوها ونحوها That means, and the like of the salah. Like, for example, عند الوضوء. نحويها uh, meaning like also in the wudu, because the hadith mentioned the salah, and another hadith mentioned in the wudu. And نحويها, like the like of the salah. What's mentioned in the salah? You have Quran recited in the salah. So before you recite the Quran, it's stressed that you use the siwak. The dhikr is mentioned in salah. There's dhikr in the salah. So before you make dhikr, it's recommended to use the siwak. Uh, there is uh, dua. So before you want to make dua, you can use a siwak, like this. So in any matters of ibadah, uh, and the, there's a hadith about the Prophet ﷺ would do that during the night prayer and things like this. وَالتَّغَيُّرٍ So يَتَأَكَّدُ عِنْدَ صَلَاةٍ وَنَحْوِهَا وَالتَّغَيُّرِ فَمٍ وَنَحْوِهِ And also it's stressed. و, و, when, when the fam, the mouth, تَغَيُّر We heard تَغَيُّر many times in the change of the, of the water. هي تَغَيُّرِ فَمٍ When the, when the mouth uh, changes, meaning the smell of the mouth. Of course, you don't change your mouth, but what is meant by that is the smell of the mouth. And the like of that. What is the like of the change of the, of the mouth, uh, whether it's the smell or the teeth are yellow or food stuck, whatever. You know, so anything that comes onto this category, this is uh, something that is stressed. So this is what is stressed. He says, وَسُنَّة Now he goes back again, وَسُنَّة Not وَيُسَنُّ Here, وَسُنَّة That means, سُنَّة is seen noon with a shadda, not seen noon with a ta' marbut. That means it's uh, in the passive tense. It's recommended also. He says, بَدَاءَةٌ بِالْأَيْمَنْ بَدَاءَةٌ بَدَاءَةٌ is a noun. Right? And uh, there's a difference between making a sentence. Here the sunnah, this is, The, the the verb so it's a jumla fa'liya it's a jumla uh, you know jumla fa'liya means uh, not not a noun one so wasunna bada'atun if a person wants to make a verb there he would say wasunna an yabda but it's uh, more eloquent to say wasunna bada'a bada'a this is as a noun that means starts uh, to start with bada'atun bil ayman bil ayman with the right uh, with with the right بَدَاءَةٌ بِالْأَيْمَنْ To start with the right فِيهِ That means in uh, in this in the, in the subject of a siwak 
or in the thumb or in the mouth wa fi tuhrin and in any tuhr in any purification to start with the right wa sha'nihi kullihi and all of one's affairs wa sha'nihi kullihi so to start with the right in the siwak in the purification in all of one's affairs as the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to do that as the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu anha that whether it's uh, combing the hair uh, putting sho- the shoes on uh, the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam كان يحب التيمم في شأن كل that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to like using the right hand or, the, the, or even the right foot to start with in, in putting the shoes on in all of his affairs you start always with matters of goodness and matters of purification is with the right uh, and the same thing with uh, using the sawak on the right side of the mouth even though there's some said on the left but this is basically what is being said here and uh, he says here wa sunna aydan wa dihanun ghibban also from what is recommended idhanun ghibban al idhan from a duhn is the duhn is the fat or the cream or something that you would uh, put on your skin uh, and ribban that means uh, once in a while not in a consistent manner um, and that means to do it every other day to uh, like this not to do it all the time all the time uh, and the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi there is some of the hadith that talk about the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam naha an tarajju illa ghabban aw illa ghibban that the prophet sallam forbid the excessiveness of combing the hair combing the hair like for a man to always make sure that every single part of his is all clean and not clean but combing his hair all the time this is not the nature of the man leave your hair uncombed sometimes it's not a call for a person to be untidy and things like this but it's a, it's basically forbidding of being excessive in luxurious ways of things or or things of that nature which is more of the nature of the women than for the men so it's this is basically what it's meant uh, so from the sunnah is to use the the cream and the like of this uh, but not to be in excessiveness in it wa dihanun ghibban wa ihtihalun fi kulli aynin thalathan wa ihtihal also wa sunnah that mean it's recommended ihtihal putting kuhl ihtihal is the action of putting kuhl and the kuhl, we know the kuhl. في كل عين ثلاثا in every eye three times. الكحل for who? For women it's obvious, right? But for men, is it from the sunnah to put kuhl? That's what it says. But the kuhl as a way of uh, cure, not as a way of beautifying oneself. So the man does not beautify himself by putting kuhl like this and you know it's not it's not like this it's to put kuhl in the eye to to for for cure for the health wise of the eye like this so this is what is uh, what is meant by that and that's what the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do um even though uh, يعني, but this is what is meant وقت حارون في كل عين ثلاثا uh, he says, وَنَظَرٌ فِي مِرْآهِ It's also uh, sunnah, not sunnah. I mean, again, I'm, I'm saying with sun, sunnah, with the shadda, to look into the mirror. Um, the Prophet ﷺ would look at the mirror. But to say that it's something recommended to look at the mirror, for example, every day, that this is something to be done in such a way, that is the the famous dua, which is not authentic uh, that a person would say when he look at the mirror, but it's an authentic dua in general, which is Allahumma kama hassanta khalqi fa hassan khuluqi. Oh Allah, the way that you uh, hassanta from the goodness of my creation, that you created me in a good way, uh, make me have husnul khuluq or good manners. This is an authentic dua. You say it in general, but it's not authentic as far as the narration when you look at the mirror. And وحرم وجه على النار make my face uh, forbidden from the hellfire. It's okay to say that dua in general, but not to think that the Prophet ﷺ would say it every time he looks at the mirror. And if you look at the mirror, you can say that. Not but without believing that this is something that the Prophet ﷺ would say when he looked at the mirror. 
Uh, and if, wh- why would the ulama include this is to that day, you know, you don't want, you want, based on the context here, is to remove something that might be on food or something or uh, things like this so that you don't harm people when they look at you. Another one, fi mir'a, watatayyubun, that it's also recommended to put tib, attatayyub, like aliktihal is to put kuhl. Tatayyub is to put tib. A tib is the, the nice smell or whatever they call it, oil or perfume. Uh, so it's also recommended with the tib. And this is something that the Prophet ﷺ used to like and for a person to have a good smell, a pleasant smell. And not just an oil that have a bad smell. right? So it's uh, the objective of it is for a person to smell good, not necessarily to smell something. So uh, to smell good. He says, وَاسْتِحْدَاد And now he's talking about some of the Sunan Al-Fitra. الاستحداد like الاكتحال التطيب استحداد الاستحداد comes from the uh, الحديدة or the, or the iron or so which means to uh, shave the pubic hair to shave the pubic hair واستحداد uh, and that's to the ruling of it or what's recommended is to shave it right and with whatever means واستحداد وحفو شارب وحفو شارب it's also recommended to uh, حفش الشارب is the mustache is the thing the hair on top of the lips which is the شارب and حفو الشارب is to make الحف is the حفة is the is the edge to make an edge between the the mustache or the hair on top of the lip and the lip so that it doesn't fall onto one's lip doesn't cover the the tip of the of the lip of the lips وحفو uh, شارب um, and comes with that whether it's to uh, cut it short or so, but not to shave it, not to shave the mustache. But the, what's more, what's what's important here is to make sure that it doesn't fall down. Does it have to be cut into uh, to be very small? Sure, a person can do that. Not the beard, but the sharib or the mustache. You can cut it with the with the scissors, but not to shave it to make it less and much less. And he could show it even to make it very less, but not to shave it. Or if a person leaves it, but as long as he does not go into his lips, this is what is the minimum requirement. And this is, uh, of course, to not to imitate the people of the book, as the Prophet ﷺ said. And with that is to leave the beard to grow. He says, um, uh, Which is to cut the nails. التقليم is to... Um, is to make is to cut it in a in a straight way, not to cut it, not to remove it, right? Because they cut your nails, that mean remove your nails. So what's known to be taklim or to cut the nails and dhufur al adfar, this is something to be done. This is also part of Sunan al Fitra. Wanatfu ibit, wanatfu ibit. Natf is to pluck, and ibit is the underarm. Uh, and this is also from the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, to pluck it. And if a person is not able to do that, then to remove it, whether it's with shaving or whatever. But uh, and the same thing with the istihdad. If a person is not able to shave it, then to cut it with, again according to one's capacity. But uh, it's easy to shave the pubic hair, so there's no excuse in this one. But al ibit or the under the arm thing, if a person is not used to it or he waited so long till he is. Uh, you know, when a person is young, it's easier. But when he waited and he was not taught this uh, this sunnah, it might be difficult for him to do that. So it's uh, if it's shaved, this is sufficient, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and then he says afterwards, wa So after mentioning these things that is uh, from what is recommended, then he says, wa And what is disliked, that means if a person do it, uh, he does not get a sin. But if he stays away from it, he gets Reward and al makruhat we should stay away from. It. We should not say oh, it's okay unless there is a need. If there is a need, then it becomes not makruh. He says wa uh, uh, and the qaza is to shave a part of the head and to leave uh, other part of the head. Uh, even though he says here kuri, but then when you see the when you hear the hadith that the Prophet forbade. Uh, the Muslim from making qaza. 
So this is something that a person should stay away from. And then that's why some of them say it's, it's forbidden, not just makruh. Uh, either to shave it all or to leave it all. But to shave part and to leave part, no. And not to make your habit that you always shave because this is the sema of the khawarij or this is the way of the khawarij, as it's mentioned. So, وَكُرِهَا قَزَعْ وَنَتْفُ شَيْبٍ It's also dislike to natf again, what's natf? To pluck the gray hair. Um, because a person gets rewards for that, so it's something that is makruh to, to remove. You can, it's from the sunnah to change the color of it, but not with black, but not to pluck it. Uh, to thakb is to make a thukb to make a hole udun is the ears of sabi uh, or uh, a boy a young boy uh, for the girl it's okay but for the boys no uh, the boy or they used to uh, and you would see that in the books of fiqh when a child is, is young in some cultures they would even wear rings and it's not a call for us to do that to, to the children right because a man is not supposed to imitate the women but if you see that in the books this is something in their cultures that the kids are to be or to have something like this boys and girls and things like this for to some cultures but not for men right? this is something and that's why those who they search for things in the books of fiqh and they they try to cause fitna to the to the muslims by saying to them it's okay to wear earrings and things like this this is, we have to be careful of these types of things because at tashabbuk, men imitating women, it's haram. Women imitating men, it's haram. And things like that. <clears throat> so, as far as the girl, it's not makruh, of course. He says, it's obligatory. Uh, وَيَجِبُ it's, That means it's, uh, it's mandatory. The khitan is the circumcision of uh, both male and female. بُعَيْدَ بُلُوغ He says it's mandatory here right after بُلُوغ, right, right after reaching the age of puberty. مَعَ أَمْنِ الضَّرَرِ With the condition there is no harm. Safe, being safe from harm. But here, what is the significance of بُعَيْدَ بُلُوغ after the, reaching the age of puberty? He's talking here about the wujub. Because if they are just born, there's no obligation upon a child when he's born. He's not responsible for his actions. But it's the parents, they do that for them. So that's why the precise wordings here is not to be understood that a person, you leave him till he reaches the age of puberty and then do circumcision for the, for the man after he reaches the age of puberty. No, but for him as a man, it's only obligatory when he reaches the age of puberty. But it's to be done when the child is born. And the subject of the, the, the female the jumhur upon that, that it's not uh, wajib, it's not mandatory, but, and, and here with the condition, as long as the harm uh, is prevented, there's nothing in the deen of Islam would approve harm. So this is a condition for anything, uh, even for what is mentioned here. Uh, so uh, this is with regard to the circumcision. Uh, he says, وَيُسَنُّ that means before the uh, the bulur or the region, the age of puberty, then it's recommended. Uh, and it's disliked. Uh, that means it's disliked. The the seventh of the meaning the the circumcision in the seventh day. Uh, and وَمِنْهَا that means it's also disliked uh, مِنْهَا here refers to when he is born إِلَيْهِ meaning to the seventh that means it's to be done after the seventh you know but again this is there is uh, no uh, authenticity uh, to that specifically um, and this is what is according to the to the madhab and another narration that it's not makruh or anything so according to whatever is, is easy or it's not harmful, uh, then it's to be done. Uh, then the next chapter is Furud al-Wudu, the obligatory acts of al-Wudu. So we'll leave that inshallah ta'ala uh, till tomorrow. And again, as mentioned here, if you're going through uh, what the words means and what each mas'ala is, 
and uh, you might find of course there is uh, of course there's evidences to be mentioned and there are things uh, like that with the ulama would would teach and things like that which is something that we will go through inshallah ta'ala but just going through the words to understand what it means and then we go to the next level inshallah ta'ala if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will